let's get into it. Uh, this week in real life, holy shit, dude. I mean, the trains just keep smashing in this station. Like, I don't even remember what happened on Tuesday. You know, <laughs> holy fuck. Uh, this week in music tech, uh... Obviously a pretty good week. Uh, Roland dropped their 606 stuff in three different formats. Obviously it's their same 606 software model, and then you just can buy it either in a TR6 box, a 606 box, or get it in their cloud as a plugin. Um, uh, I love the 606. It's one of my favorite drum machines. The pricing kind of works out to where a real 606 is not that much more money in, in fact it's kind of the same if you don't mind a scratch and dent um obviously that's a bit of a pain in the ass whereas the modern remake version uh while it is digital is probably the smarter purchase um uh, I got 6 million 606 samples. Do I need it? No. Do I want it? A little bit. Um, I wouldn't kick it out of bed. It may show up. I just, I like, I like what they did with the sequencer from what I can tell, uh, on the, the remake one, not the TR6 one. Uh, and it intrigues me and I think it would be fun to have. Um, so I make rap. Obviously, the big news this week, the uh, Profit 5 slash 10 from Sequential. Uh, Dave Smith does not give a single solitary fuck. I love that that thing has mono out. Like, the temptation to even just put a chorus and a delay in it uh, must have been huge. And they're like, nope. Um, Black Walnut. Uh, I mean, it's just gorgeous. Uh, I owned a... Rev 3.3 for a long time, and we had to sell it when we got a little hard up for money, and I've been looking for one ever since for a reasonable price. Uh, it's a running gag between my wife and I because uh, we'll be driving down the street and there'll be a, a yard sale, and she'll be like, I don't see a profit five. But um, so uh, to get one at a re relatively reasonable price, um, that's under warranty and brand new, but is otherwise more or less identical to the OG one. Uh, it, that's a no-brainer. And then add velocity and after touch. I mean, come on. Uh, yeah, I, I had to buy it. I ordered the Profit 10, uh, and I cannot wait till it gets here. I'm just ridiculously excited about it. Uh, I don't... Uh, I'm not one of those sorts that imparts... Uh, magic mojo to some piece of gear because a band used it. Uh, but having said that, uh, two of my very favorite bands, Berlin and Japan, are both like just intertwined with the sound of the Prophet 5. And it's just like, I love those sounds. I love the songs. I love the synth. Uh, I'm just really looking forward to getting it. I should mention... Um, I'm very good friends with several people over there. I have done some work with them in the past. Uh, so my any opinion I offer in this regard, unlike the Moog, which I paid full price for, and uh, I don't know anybody at Moog, um, with the uh, Profit 10, uh, I'm friends with them, and uh, my opinions are not unbiased in this regard. So I just want to be clear about that. Um... As far as, seeing how the time's doing, uh, as far as my week goes, uh, I didn't get a ton done. I had a lot of personal things um, I had to deal with. Uh, let's see here. It's actually, like, because there's so much happening outside of my sphere, it's like it's actually hard to put it in context and, and think about what I've actually accomplished. Um, but... Uh, oh, I remember. I was able to, if you uh, follow me on Twitter, you probably saw this. I was able to build on the ARM Mac Mini, the DTK. I was able to build end-to-end -end, uh, dub station in uh, 
entirely on the arm and it's a rosetta or a uh, universal binary so it works in all macs um and that was a that was a f a fairly difficult process it took me a couple of days to sort it out a lot of certificate nonsense and and whatnot but uh what this means is that it will be now i can just pull in the the folder for the project and build it just like i would on the intel mac and uh, thus, the our, our product line should be ARM built or built for both ARM and Intel by the time you can buy an ARM Mac. So uh, there shouldn't be any issues there. Uh, the other big thing for me is that I finished. I should have led with this. Uh, I finished a album, a full-length album for Triplicate Records, uh, nine tracks. It's called Depth of Field. It's uh, I don't want to say ambient. It's ambience um uh it's a lot of the techniques that i've used in the last year or so just uh tape loops and and uh field recordings noise beds uh it's entirely electromechanically sourced uh that is to say there's not a single synthesizer on it um i used the lap steel i used my normal guitars the roads uh bass and guitar pedals in addition to the tape loops and uh, xylophone uh, marimba uh, if i needed a synthesizer kind of uh sound i did it with pedals and freeze effects and uh, that and that sort of thing um there is not a single synth on it which is kind of it's kind of fun uh uh that should be out october 23rd uh, <laughs> october 23rd on triplicate and that brings us to questions yeah we're looking good uh, uh youtube question from in the last uh, video from steven mandelbaum he wanted to know how i feel about bitwig well um when it comes to making music if i am typing a song uh, that is to say, if I'm doing it all with generative uh, processes and randomization and whatnot, Max for Live, yada, 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 uh, a lot of editing and that sort of thing, uh, I do it in live just because I'm very fast and comfortable with live. Uh, if I'm actually playing the song, which is, say, on the instrument, on the synths, guitar, bass, uh, I tend to use Bitwig uh, because Bitwig has MPE um, and just some of the little things about its workflow make it somewhat easier to record live instruments and work with them. Um, whereas live is, is obviously great for electronic music. Um, so it kind of depends on what I'm making. Uh, my next record will be almost entirely done in Bitwig because it's all played big performance kind of shit whereas when i'm just doing loops and and uh fucking around with you know field recordings and shit i will almost always use live for that it's just uh, it's better for it um my work day i spend almost entirely in bitwig and there's a reason for that the uh because of the nature of my audio system i run a dante system uh if the DAW crashes, it takes down the uh, virtual hardware driver for Dante, and thus I have to reboot the computer. When I'm working on a plug-in, I crash the DAW a lot. Uh, Bitwig has a uh, it has a sandbox for plugins, so if you are working on a plugin and the plugin crashes, it doesn't take down the DAW; it just closes the sandbox. Uh, and this is so nice; it's super quick. Uh, it's uh it's just a much easier way for me to work especially on ui code which is very crashy uh dsp when there's something going wrong it generally just sounds bad but ui code when there's something wrong it crashes everything so uh the sandbox in bitwig is my favorite thing about bitwig and i'm in it all day every day for my work i assume that answers your question about my thoughts on it uh jeff lady Dear Penthouse, 
I work in my studio all day long for my day job, then it's tough to get the energy to make music. How do I finish a song after working in this room all day? I've resorted to using colored hue lights to make it look a little different. Disco clock. Didn't you just build a tiki bar, too? Uh, that is, as letters to penthouse go, not the worst I've read, but up there. Um, speaking for me personally, since my uh, hobbies and uh, creative life use the same exact computer that my work day does. Uh, I tend to, if I'm not doing actual code, uh, actually coding a user interface or working on a product, uh, I tend to either sit in the living room or on our porch with a laptop. Uh, and even then I will, uh, even if I'm just working on code, I will get up and every two hours or so and go away for an hour and go do something else. Um, kind of gotta, uh, I can't stare at this for, for eight hours and then another four hours is just, that's not gonna, that's not gonna fly. So I break my day up into little chunklets. Uh, I, given task takes, you know, 30 minutes or whatever, then I go do something else for 30 minutes. Entirely different. Uh, work in the garden, read a book, pet the cat, whatever the fuck. Um trying to keep the whole process linear and glued to that one screen is a recipe for madness. Michael Southard, how often do you listen to your own music after it is released, old or new? You have any albums of yours that you listen to all the time and any that you absolutely hate now? And then to his question, James Campbell responded, I wonder if his video answer matches what I think the answer is. He listens to RC RT60 albums sometimes, but everything else he's done with as soon as it ships. You're almost right, James. Uh, I don't listen to my music at all. I will occasionally have a fit of nostalgia and go look for an old performance video on YouTube or something of that ilk. But in general, I never... Once I've... Uh, the last thing I listen to is the mastered version as it comes back to me, and I never hear it again. Uh, if I do hear it again, I will generally be like, hey, that's pretty good, I wonder who that is, and I'll look and it's me because it came up on shuffled or something. Um, but yeah, I don't, uh, I don't listen to my own music at all. Um, a lot of stuff, I'll hear it when I, I'll hear the final song as I render it to tape. I'm pointing at my tape deck. Uh, then I will hear it again when I get back from the mastering and I check it. And then uh, that's, those are the only two times I listen to the final product. Um, I don't know why I don't. Uh, I don't have any particular need to sit around and dwell on my own stuff. I will occasionally reference older songs to make sure I didn't. I'm not doing something over. Uh, <laughs> it reminds me about six months ago, I came across a track on my hard drive that it was unfinished, and so I finished it. I mixed it, and I, I thought it was a pretty good track, and I finished it and mixed it, and. Uh, dumped it to tape, pulled it back in, uh, put it in my folder for sending to mastering, wherein I discovered that I had already finished it, dumped it to tape, uh, pulled it back in and put it in the folder for mastering. So there were just uh, two different versions of the same exact track, uh, just because I, I guess I had forgotten to save or I had a crash or something. Um, so that sort of thing will happen on occasion, <laughs> but, uh, uh, on the whole, it's fairly rare. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Anyhow, I think that about covers it for this week. Uh, get your questions in for next week when the thread comes up. Uh, join my Patreon if you want to read my weekly blog posts and such like. More money you spend, more should I give you. Uh, which seems fair to me. Uh smash that bell ring that like whatever the fucking youtube algorithm gimme of the week is and uh, i'll see you next week <laughs>